Deku and his fellow students in Class 1A of UA High's Hero Course have been chosen to participate in a safety program to Nabu Island to further improve their skills and gain experience in Ordinary Heroics the students aid the, ci the kind citizens with small services and everyday chores with low crime rate in the quiet community. All seems well and good, but the rise of a new villain threatens to put the students' courage to the test and challenge their capabilities as heroes. Hey guys, what's up? Lucky Chi7 is here today after... God, it's been a while since we talked about my hero. I think Jul July? No, June. I think June was the last time we we talked about like my hero in general. And... I knew with this movie coming out on Blu-ray, I think it's a good time to finally kind of get all, most, most of the key members back in and talking about the movie. And I know technically the movie came out back in February, but again, I figured give it some time between then and the Blu-ray coming out and then an extra week or two for everyone to watch the movie. And that's we're having it now. But y'all always ask the questions. Of course I'm not doing the podcast by myself. Nah, too boring. Come on. <laughs> know the drill at this point. Know the drill at this point. I didn't say that. I've got some special friends and some special guests. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hello everyone, Blue Star Saber here, once again to join Lucky Chi in the My Hero Academia podcast. And funny enough, I'm also the only one that's able to attend all his My Hero Academia podcasts at this point. <laughs> hey now, that's that's not true. He's roped me into this too. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, it's true, but you guys that's missed the last I... one out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean the last one? Last one was uh, season two discussion. No, the last one. Discussion. Well, Super. the last, actually, the last one was a manga arc, which you weren't there. Neither was Margarita nor For Life. That was me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Lucky Chi only. <laughs> so, if you guys couldn't tell by this lovely voice of mine, this is LK and I'm JH, also known as Steve. And Blue Star gave it away, Margarita here. <laughs> Sorry about that, Margarita, but hey. Thanks, no, no. Thanks no, Blue Star. No introduction needed, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still getting ripped on. <laughs> also, he is the cursed child, known ah, as ah, known ah. as known as Lemon Star Saber. So, oh, come no, on. don't, don't, don't many, forget, no. don't forget, Lucky Chi, don't forget, he is also Mr. Wikipedia article here. How many nicknames <laughs> are you going to give me? How many times are you going to bring it up? I don't know. How many times did you read the Wikipedia article of Naruto? Fair point. I never oh, read the art Wikipedia articles of Naruto. Their bias says... Could have fooled me. Seriously, <laughs> folks. Go take a listen to the Narusaku <laughs> podcast that he's on, and you will hear him literally describe <laughs> not you know we 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 did you know for those of you who haven't followed us since the beginning um <laughs> in the narusaku podcast we'd read the chapter first then discuss it but this guy here oh my god he took it to a whole other level <laughs> all right going into detail <laughs> Uh, take, it, take it one step further. The part two retrospective podcast. Oh, please. Do you have to bring that one up? We have to. Ah. <laughs> it is literally one of the most prime examples <laughs> of your of your ability to go down to the minute of minutest details. Oh, come on. I've got of a lot things of, that we, that. Of, of things that, by the way, clearly all the listeners are aware of. Otherwise, they wouldn't tune in. Oh, come on. I've gotten a lot better since then. Yes, you have. But uh, you, we still haven't... You still haven't made up for the time 
for all the times that it sounded like, that it sounded like you were literally reading off the frickin' Wikipedia articles oh, off of the Naruto Wiki. Oh boy, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna have to deal with this for the next few years, aren't I? <laughs> That's your quirk, Blue memorization. <laughs> that actually is a useful quirk, by the way. It is. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I can remember every embarrassing detail you guys told me about. <laughs> See, well, there you go. Blackmail. <laughs> For those of you that remember the two heroes uh, podcast, which I think was a couple years back, it was just on the expectations for the film. First impressions, which cover positive and negatives. Overall thoughts. Uh, the questions, we didn't really have any questions for the last movie, but we do for this one. And also covering for expectations of the film that's primarily just on marketing, which is trailers, and posters, interviews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's the general gist of how this podcast is going to go. So why don't we just go ahead and jump right into expectations for Heroes Rising. And Normally, I save myself for the end, but I'll go ahead and give my two cents on this. I actually really didn't keep up with um, what was going on with uh, Heroes Rising, especially since at the time when this got announced, I think either joint training arc was still going on or it had just wrapped up. So my love for my hero was kind of like waning a little bit at the time. So I was like... Uh, as, as much as I liked uh, Two Heroes, part of me was like, okay, like I kept up with that in the background and whatnot, but I really didn't have a whole lot of, as to what I think could happen. And that's kind of my two cents on the matter. What about you guys? For me, I guess didn't really keep track of the movie for most part though I do remember some of the marketing heck even the manga had the main villain cameo in a few chapters <laughs> let's see to order to hype it up but yeah so granted I do remember some of the trailers emphasizing a lot on the class 1A students so let's see it seemed like this movie was going to involve them a lot at least seem to try and say we're going to involve the entire class this time instead of just like half of them like what happened in the last movie where only about at least maybe a half or slightly above the half were focused on this movie while some of the others would like while they were appearing in the movie they were just more than like cameo things in many ways i guess it gave me a sort of similar impression that the will of fire hmm, movie marketing did where it emphasized on all of the Naruto teams, and like, yeah, they are, they seem to all be playing a role in this movie. So it was so, something similar to that. And this would like also be the first movie post All Might's one for all thing. So I expected there wasn't going to be any All Might action, though. I was wondering what kind of role he would play in this. But yeah, I'll be honest. During the during the time in which the film was probably in production really have too many expectations obviously i knew that with the popularity of the first film and with the popularity of the manga and the anime rising that there would definitely be a second film in the works um but as far as things that you know things uh you know stuff like guessing what the plot would be about guessing what kind of villains would be i really didn't speculate too hard on that but and I guess we'll get into this more when we get into the marketing. But once the marketing actually started coming in, is when uh, is when I started to slowly take an interest. I just have to keep it short because mainly I'm, I didn't really know too much beyond the marketing <laughs> going into the film. I mean, I think I saw one thing in December that said that a movie was coming, and then that was basically it. <laughs> so I I really had no idea what the expectations were going into it. It just, I mean, I guess it goes into the second, which I'll, I'll go into more detail than with the marketing aspect of it, but uh, mm -hmm. for expectations, I just, my hero, usually I expect at least average to above average level quality, I guess. 
in many ways, I guess this is a good way to transition over into the marketing. What? So, when the poster came out, I thought visually it, it actually it was actually really cool with uh, seeing uh, yeah, Deku, Kachan, and Class 1A, and then and also Hawks. And... Yeah, Haw- Hawks was also there too, which at the time, I don't know. Season four. I believe I this is. I believe th- this time of this film, this would be his first animation debut. Yeah, th- this would be before season four, which I thought was interesting. In some ways, it's kind of interesting because I think this movie takes place after the events of the Mid- Meta Liberation arc, so it oh. might spoil a few things. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yeah. It was that's... midway through there that time, so yeah. That's right. still, uh, the liberation was still going on, but uh, people were telling, at least people online were like saying it sort of spoils, but doesn't really at all at the same time. Yeah. There's like a few. There's like a few minor details that I do know. That that's, I do know some critics uh, apparently said that 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 they were a bit confused about where this film takes place in the My Hero Academia timeline because so far all the movies have been canon, unlike. Bleach, none of the films are canon, and no, it's only the last two sadly became canon, and One Piece, well, they're not really canon, but they have very... The there's, latest one's one, there's one film that's canon in One Piece, and uh, only one. Strong mode, mm. right? Mm. Yeah, and that's only because Oda wrote it. Yeah, And, and if I'm understanding, the last three films in Dragon Ball have been considered canon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, 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 always, I'll always joke about. I'll always joke about this. Battle of Gods Resurrection F. We're canon. Dragon Ball Super. No, you're not. Yeah, essentially. I mean, they're canon to Z, and now, now Super's version of it is like canon to itself. So it's a slippery uh, slope with uh, Dragon Ball because yeah, Toriyama wrote the. All three of those movies, but I guess you could say the same for the Boruto movie, given the fact it has a manga arc and a fritzy anime arc. But yeah, when the poster, when they first revealed the poster, um, my thoughts on it were obviously it's cool that once again all the all the heroes at UA Academy Class One A are involved. As far as you know, the way you know it's, I'd say it's an average looking poster. You know, they're all posing, ready for action, especially. With Izuku and um, and uh, Bakugo there at the front there. Uh, yeah, I think with those two at the front, it's clearly mm. implying it. It's going to be focusing on their dynamic in this film compared to like the last one with Midori and Albai. Oh, yeah, and and before I saw any of the trailers, though, when I saw the two kids in the middle, I'm like, huh, that's mm-hmm. uh, familiar. To put it interesting. Uh, or I should say to put it in retrospect, because you know this uh, at the same time the manga was going on, what would eventually be adapted as season four. Mm-hmm. Um, there was that whole little debacle, but I'll get into that when we discuss the pros and the cons. I think there was one. Obviously, Blue Star mentioned that the main villain showed up in the manga for a couple of chapters just to promote it. But I want to say that Sean and Jump also you know, did some marketing. They did. That's the only one I knew of, mm-hmm. yeah. which was just Bakugo and uh, Deku in the front, and then it had All Might in the back. Yep. As far as the trailers are concerned, uh, they were pretty, you know, they were pretty standard trailers, I'd say. You know, not they gave away a little of the plot, but otherwise, uh, it was your typical, here's what we've animated so far, <laughs> build up some hype, you know, things like that. And uh, Yeah, I don't think there was, like, too much hype when it came to the trailers themselves, but it was like, man, that's that's interesting. I think from a marketing standpoint, honestly, I think they figured everyone was because this to me, I don't remember there being really all that much marketing. You'd see a couple things from here on out, but yeah. I think a lot of people just expected because it was my hero that it yeah. would just do well in the first place. I think what because season season I don't think season four came out, but it was. No, but no, it, it was not. It was coming out in October. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the movie came out in uh, December twentieth of twenty nineteen. So it was yep. like a few months of a difference. Yep. So I think they uh, just banked it all on the fact that they were the anime was coming back, and then it's like, oh hey, there's a movie too. Yep. <laughs> 
Otherwise, I think that's slowly starting to become standard in in anime movie marketing in in today's times. You're starting to see less of it, like you know, in print or on TV, and more and just more and more of it online. I feel like Road to Ninja was the last one that really did any like heavy marketing, but maybe mm-hmm. I'm not not a hundred percent on that. But on one hand, it could be a positive sign because I think a lot of anime movies marketing before did kind of spoil the plots of the movie. <laughs> I mean, well, I was actually was it Road to Ninja because I feel like the last had a lot of it too. They might have. A lot of false advertising, that's for sure. Well, yeah. I know. Well, I know that they really, at least for the last, they release character sketches of, mm-hmm. hey, here's what they're going to look like. Yeah. And we, we, were, all, we, and we, we were all discussing, you know, what those designs meant. <laughs> Granted, we all should have probably took it as a sign what the last was going to end up being when they didn't, when Hinata's design ended up being the last one shown. I think we all figured, because what, the manga was ending right before the movie came out. So, yeah, you know, and there was the whole debate about, like, was well, it going to be canon? Was it not going to be canon? I was like, mm. lucky us. Lucky us. I think, uh, what? That, yeah, Super had some pretty decent marketing, though, for Dragon Ball Brawly. I think that's yeah. the last of it I yeah. know that had some good. But then again, it's Brawly. <laughs> of course, they're going to market the giant. Out of it. <laughs> they did really well for the uh, the Gogeta thing, though. They didn't really spoil him at all. So yeah, yeah. They did. that was a surprise. I was like, "Whoa!" I okay. think people thought it was like, "No, there's no way that they're gonna like do that silly uh, PS." Or, no, right. <laughs> Whatever. Especially happened. after the whole, um, you know, the whole debacle when they went up against Goku Black, of right. you know, with Vegito. Right. Oh, oh, we're going to retcon the Patara earrings. <laughs> then they made the fusion dance look a shitload better. <laughs> I thought you were, were referenced the gritzy female Brawly from the uh, uh, tournament. Uh, yeah. yeah, as as the debacle, but oh well, either way. Yeah, well, Kale wasn't really a debacle. It was just that they didn't handle her 100% as well as they could have. Yeah. As far as uh, stuff that was revealed about the movie's plot here, not a whole lot. I ha- I have to say the marketing. I know, you know, like you know, they build up the villain as some sort of ultimate evil. Yeah, like like they typically do. You know, it's like the greatest like this, t- like, this t- like this time they they'll face their greatest challenge. Yeah, and I'm like you know. This is your second movie, and the manga hasn't even ended yet. So it's, it's great that you're building up hype, but uh, <laughs> you're and in the, in the, not, not to mention away from but see, not to mention, challenge. Not to mention, most anime movie villains aren't regarded as memorable, except maybe the ones that Oda has done in One Piece, Memma from Road to Ninja, and Brawly from Dragon Ball. <laughs> I mean, the, okay, it, it's subjective to say if they were villains, but uh, the fate of Black one I thought was was decent for what they were what they were given. Well, Bleach, yeah, what fate of Black is like considered by many Bleach fans to be one of the best Bleach movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I liked it as well. I mean, it's probably because it's. The, f- the first thing in the wild to focus on the relationship of Ichigo and Rukia. But anyway, back on to My Hero Academia before we lose sub- lose the topic. <laughs> the, uh, uh, first- I, I think it would happen, though, but yeah, go ahead, Steve. So yeah, first impressions. Um, so here's a little behind-the-scenes thing. Uh, me and Manga Reader, way back in February, we actually yep. saw this movie in uh, subbed in the theaters. And I was going to surprise him, but then he made the suggestion of, oh, why don't we go see Heroes Rising? <laughs> and, I, and I even texted him this, you jackass, I was going <laughs> to surprise you. That's funny. I, I acted surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fun enough, I actually tried to watch her on sub online, but unfortunately the only sub I could find was one with commentators, so I had to wait until... 
this week to find it in dub. The, the dub, oh, yeah. Because yeah. I tried watching it in the sub, but with the Japanese commentators, but it's just, it just was so distracting. Commentary but, uh, is not good, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as first impressions go, when we watched it, I walked out of that theater, saying, you know, saying it was good. You know, it's just typical standard anime movie. There's lots of action and a lot of plot, and not a whole lot of plot going on. But uh, you know, it was it wasn't boring to be sure. Honestly, the only thing I had trouble, you know, because this was subbed, so we had to, at least for me. Yeah. Kind of had to read it as the action was going on, yeah. And you know, it's like it's a little tricky doing that when you're not when you're in a movie theater because you can't hit the, the pause <laughs> button. Go ahead and read it, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, one thing about the advantages of online or just having the DVD or thing like that is you can always rewind to check what they said or did. But with the other audience members, we laughed along with the jokes. That yeah. they that they put out in the beginning, especially when, uh, what's his Bakugo? name? Uh, no, uh, when uh, uh, Rikido saved that one kid from drowning. Yeah, he's uh -huh. like, "You're safe now." <laughs> I'm a sugar, yeah. sugar man. Sugar man. <laughs> that feels like a com that feels like a superhero from a cheesy comic book. From the Silver Age. <laughs> That's why I call really these characters by their given names. <laughs> I feel yeah. like he's ultimate muscle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Ultimate muscle. <laughs> That's probably what he's based off of. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it, it is but, in Japan, obviously, but... But those are my first impressions. Margarita, what about you? I think when we were went to the movie itself, I think I kind of agreed with you in that... Uh, it didn't have, at least when I, again, this was first impression-wise, it didn't feel like it lived up to what the first movie did, which was kind of weird, because the first mm -hmm. movie revolved around, like, five people, really. I mean, All Might mm -hmm. was there, too, which was kind of cool at the end. I felt like them using the, by that time, we had already known what the uh, uh, one theme was, the vocalized version of it. I thought that that was kind of weird in the situation there, but uh, most part, I thought it was definitely a lot more actiony than the first one. Story wise, I again first impression wise, I thought it was kind of bland, mainly because again it was we were kind of trying to keep up with reading it. <laughs> well, I suppose the story is basically the bad guy wants to steal someone's quirk and the. Mr. Yeah, Wikipedia right. at work yeah. here. That sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, Memorization quirk activated. <laughs> oh boy, I was just gonna say, I was gonna give one sentence. That's all I was gonna do. <laughs> While the UA students have to protect him. What about you, the lucky chief? What were your first impressions? Um, so I had seen the movie in dubbed when it first came out. I came out uh rather liking it a whole lot. Uh, kind of debating, I was like, is it better than two heroes? And I kept thinking about that for most of the day after I finished watching it, and I was like, <laughs> hmm, is it really? And then, as soon as I finished the movie, um, I thought more about it, and I noticed there were a few things that I noticed about you here that I didn't really pick up on the first time in comparison to this, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later on in the podcast. But all I know is for my initial impressions, I I came out really liking it. Do you want me to give my impressions now, or do you have more to say, Lucky Chi? <laughs> no, that, that's all i got to say. <laughs> well, since I've only just watched the film just about, like, since yesterday, let's see. It's still a bit fresh in my mind, but I have to admit, mm. I was quite impressed by the fact that they were able to have all the, let's see, major... Uh, for the most part, major young see, class 1A secondary characters each have a part and a role in this movie. The only other time I can think of when a movie's done this like this would be Naruto, The Will of Fire. I was just so, about to bring that up. Yeah, see, so yeah, it's like... In many ways, it, because that was the only Naruto movie in which all members of the K-11 let's see, 
had a role to play in the movie, plus Sai and Gaia. And let's see, well, granted, you could have minus Sasuke, but then again, Sasuke doesn't appear in the majority of the films. No, he doesn't. Let's see. Which is probably see probably one of the few things that, one of the few reasons why James would probably watch most of those movies. No. <laughs> but hey, but yeah. So I was quite impressed that the movie found would see a role for each of the characters to play, be it major or minor. Well, or one that. of them didn't get it, but we know why that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I think everyone knows who I'm talking about, and I'm not saying everyone in this podcast. I mean, everyone listening to this podcast. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. But yeah, I was, like, uh, I was also surprised how, just how many cameos you just had in this movie. You had, like, the League of Villains. You had the Doctor, who I don't think is fully a ritzy, fully a, the Doctor f- for, that works for All for One, who hasn't fully appeared in the anime yet, I believe. And, uh, Spoilers! I'm joking. <laughs> let's see. I was very surprised they also had, like, let's see, Endeavor versus Darby at the beginning. But yeah, too. So that, I was like, and all the hero and most of the heroes that you've seen, as oh, well as, let's see, granted, I'd already seen season four, but still seen this movie, but, let's see, they gave, like, a role to this hero that no one saw before, if you're an anime-only watcher, which... I think it tends to be most Western viewers, as I think most Japan viewers and readers tend to read the manga first before the anime, as I think manga tends to be more looked at towards than animes in Japan. Due to Uh, mm -hmm. Um, cultural and financial reasons from discussions I've been having on Heaven and Earth, since I think manga is a bit more manageable compared to like DVD sales there. Uh-huh. There's another thing about this movie. Yeah, it's probably the most action-packed of the two My Hero Academia movies, but this felt like the closest My Hero Academia has ever gone to, I suppose, Dragon Ball-level types of fights. <laughs> I... I don't know if I would go that far. It's but close. Not, it's not, it's cl- n- not necessarily DBC... Explosion, explosion, explosion. But I guess it's more like, let's see, sort of mid part two, I guess, of Naruto. Or mm-hmm. mid. I go like One Piece New World kind of thing, maybe? To some the, extent. The thought I had, and I could be totally wrong about this, but I, I was getting more of a Goku versus Piccolo vibe during uh, the final portion of the original Dragon Ball story. Okay, let's see. I haven't really watched that fight, but let's see. But I guess it could be close to that. But I suppose maybe early Dragon Ball or early late Dragon Ball. But see, a lot more explosive, and <laughs> in a sense, and clearly the animators had a fun time doing all that animation. So yeah, I thought it was like a fun side story if you want to see the class of One A take on these powerful villains. That were that a group of four villains with these unique quirks, which you don't really see often in the manga. Early, late Dragon Ball. What a concept. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, ah, no. well, I, haven't really anywho, fully, uh, I haven't really fully read Dragon Ball, so maybe it's a bad example. But <laughs> Shame on you. So, as far as positives go... Obviously, Blue Star already mentioned, and pretty much everyone else has already mentioned that the fighting is a whole. It, this movie is a whole lot more action packed than the first movie was. That's not to say that the first movie didn't have its actiony moments, but this one had more. I'll say this: um, it was definitely like I felt like it, it, it flowed more compared to the first movie, like in terms of pacing. Right. And again, Blue Star already mentioned this. The, the the cast this time around had more to do than just simply be, um, you know, just background support characters until like the very end. At least here, we get to see them do stuff. And yeah, those the main bad guy in his lackeys, so they at least got to fight the lackeys. Yeah. Let's see the fight between Chimera. Um, and uh Ejiro is uh is actually is is compared 
you know, it's the second best fight next to Musico and, you know, uh, next to Midoriya and Bakugo's fight. Right. Are we talking the first one or the second one? The, technically, uh, the second technically. one. I guess the second one would make more sense. But yeah, yeah. The second one. No, technically they fought him three times if you count the, their fight with the U.S. students. But okay, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, this movie also definitely had also definitely hit the emotional beats. Uh, you know this. I wouldn't say you know I wouldn't say I cried, but no. if there was if I was younger more impressionable, I would have cried at this movie. It had some good tear-jerking moments. It did. Uh, anyone else got any more positives about the movie? Um, oh. I f- um, one thing I like about this movie is that the villains' designs seem a lot better compared to like the previous movie's villains, where Come they were all let's yeah. see, due to the fact, while well, they still seem to have a they seem to be a bit more unique, even if they might have s- similar designs and Zitsi, some of the, these lot have a bit more unique designs compared to the other group who look just like plain mercenaries, except for their leader. This apparently seems to be based off Medusa from Marvel's let's see, Inhumans, which they try to make a big deal out in the MCU and try to make them the new X-Men, but that didn't work, but Oh well, <laughs> okay. And then you have Mummy, who can wrap anything, any object, and turn it into like a witty min- sort of like henchman to fight. And I think my favorite of the henchmen is Chimera with his wolf-like appearance, bird claws, and reptilian tail. I also like his personality <laughs> uh, and his backstory of being an outcast by society by. <laughs> due to his appearance looking all beastly though at the same time a bit hypocritical when he mocks Mizu's appearance in many ways the ability it's like he's like a mini tailed beast in the way he fights <laughs> and that's that this what kind of reminds me and the fact that he's so powerful that it takes at least four more heroes to take him down <laughs> i also quite like the main villain nine let's see and, well, maybe not. It's, he doesn't have like the most complex motivation or personality. Where he just wants the the strongest to rule the earth, and he's just like after a quirk that can just Mitzi manage his like thing. Though in terms of power, he seems to be quite menacing due to the fact that he has a mini copy of All for One, which lets him steal up to. Eight quirks, giving him nine abilities. Hence his name, nine, which is kind of corny, but uh, I suppose in many ways I do kind of like how he tried to use the League of Villains for his own benefits. Though clearly, the League of Villains, Etsy, would be able to dispose of him later. And the fact that the Doctor clearly was just using him as a test subject for later down the line. Spoilers for anime watchers, but what would come in the current arc, but other positives, I like how the movie used what the show had shown of each of their abilities that came before. Funny enough, they also, I think, did a few spoilers for some of the abilities some of the heroes would have for season five, like a, the one that has toy armor, you know, Dark Shadow, you know, the do you know the one that has Dark Shadow? What's his name again? Tokoyami. Tokoyami, because I think <laughs> they still spoiled what... Sorry, I can't always remember the names of all the characters, but yeah, it seems that he has a sort of ability you won't see until Season 5. Each of the fights took place and how they were defeated. I was a bit surprised that Ritsi Slice Ritsi was taken down by two hit by Ashido and Okay, Yami. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I do like how we got to see the massive dark shadow monster we haven't seen since the summer training arc. Beginning of season three, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. The light, let's see. One thing I do like is even when they beat all these villains, I did find the four quirks that he also stole from those unnamed heroes interesting, such as the air, the air wall scanning of quirks. 
which seemed to also was used a bit of hinting more towards what's going to happen to Midoriya in season five that was very controversial in the manga. Mm-hmm. We're going to get there in March. I <laughs> it's, either, it's either March or April. Who knows when the actual date is? I know, all I know is it's spring. So we're, it's, we're, we're it's approaching coming. that. Yeah, the, and the bullet laser attacks, which he can do from his fingers. And my personal favorite, let's see, out of the quirks he stole, the hydras that he can summon from the back of him to attack. But yeah, he's and also his weather manipulation, which is his main quirk, which is clearly powerful, but so powerful that his body can't handle it, hence the reason why he's after cell activation. Mm-hmm. Maybe this might be a bit shipperish, but I did, I suppose you could count, maybe not count, but see that when Uraka got knocked down, you had Midoriya grabbing and saving her. I guess you could count that as a ship moment or not, but... Bias! Playing <laughs> in... <laughs> but, <I don't> <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, let's hey, at least I admit it. <laughs> Ugh, 85 years later, I finally get my response. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I'm, I think one of the positives, actually, for my opinion would be the art actually used here. I don't know if it was any different than the uh, anime, but it definitely felt more fluid. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's the same than, uh, animation, but I think it has bigger budget. Oh, yeah. oh, gee, really? It's a movie after <laughs> all. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry for... Okay, again, it just Captain seems like some of it in certain areas, like Bakugo looked a lot more detailed than comparably at times than he did in the anime. But uh, I don't know if it's a pro or con. To me, it feel, felt like uh, Bakugo in this entire movie was the Vegeta to Deku's Goku. It's, yeah, it definitely did have that vibe. I can agree with you on that. So, I, like I said, I don't know if that's a positive in some people's mind or a negative, because I know I do, uh, Bakugo fans might find that a negative. Speaking of Bakugo fans, I like how the girl ends up being more of the Bakugo <laughs> supporter of the movie. Yeah. Which, when you look at the poster, at least in retrospect now, it it makes sense. Seems what? like every time, yeah, Bakugo showed up against the bad guy, he got walloped even faster than Deku did. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like I said, I don't know if that's a pro or con, because, I, frankly, I, by this point, I think uh, Bakugo actually became one of my top two favorites. If, well, sometimes he'll be my number one, sometimes he'll be my number two. I think let's see some. T- I think it might let's see be a good thing just because at times Bakugo seems invincible, but when you have someone knocking him down a bit, yeah, it, it means he needs to get better and stuff. I'd say for me, when it comes to Bakugo, and and I've noticed this, um, the hideout radar happened in the manga, but even more so after the uh, provisional license arc. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, he didn't really start getting a lot more interesting until like after his uh, last fight with uh, Deku. I think well, that's because about his second fight. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Second fight. He started becoming a lot less, let's see, angry and jealous of Midoriya. I'd say. Wait. In fact, I think one thing about this movie uh, I enjoy it's the relationship between those two. <laughs> Which that's something I wasn't going to bring up. That's actually one of my positives. Is um, like, the, and especially like if you compare him now to. How it was in season one, like there's a there's a huge contrast. Yeah, I mean he wasn't necessarily as overconfident in the in this movie per se. Yeah, and, and even when he was in his overconfident state, it's usually what he does to try and cope with his, I guess, fears is a way of saying it. In a sense, yeah. I suppose you could say insecurities would be a better word. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And let's see. Um, I also remember another thing I kind of liked was this brief fight between Endeavor and Dabi. But let's see. But that's with, like stuff that happens later down the lines. But you got two fire quirk users fighting each other. But one thing I. But going back to the Debaco and Midoriya thing, I do like how Midoriya was willing to sacrifice one for all in order to beat the bad guy, even though that means his career as a hero is over. Would be over afterwards. And I mean, that, that's another thing that you could hit on that could be both a pro and con. For a pro, I guess it would be for an emotional aspect, but I guess a con would have been like 
Jesus. What is like, it, what it, can it, one it, for all it, not do? It's, 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 it's kind of null and void like by the end, but um well, I suppose we should do? try it until we get actually into the cons. <laughs> yeah, we'll, you'll wait for that. Um I will. I'm just it, I guess with the thing, the positive for that is that I guess it gave again a more emotional aspect of it. But I'll I'll touch on the negatives of that aspect when we actually start talking about the negatives. I guess. Um, anyway, for more positive on my part, outside the art style, obviously, type of party guy that I am. Um, uh, I'm trying to think because. Uh, no, my first impressions. I actually, having rewatched the movie, mm-hmm. grew to appreciate it a hell of a lot more because of the uh, first off being able to watch it in the dub, so I was able to just watch it instead of having to read at the times. Although I don't have a problem with the subs voice actors, I guess Blue kind of covered all of it in some sense that uh, the villains had their personalities. Um. While the cause wasn't probably anything particularly spectacular, they were they were willing to act on that cause. Um, I think it like I think the positive for that was just showcasing again how faulty the hero villain society can ultimately be in this series. Or even quirk society as a whole, since some are ba- uh, discriminated still based on appearance. Right. Yeah, but did capture on that sense, and it was like, okay, so maybe this guy doesn't have that terrible of an idea of maybe, but then obviously, when you touch upon it, it's like just strong, strong rule over the week. That's not really an aspect of really what Deku and Bakugo were saying. It wouldn't work. Let's see. I, uh, I like how Bakugo says how stupid this idea is, <laughs> or like how cliche. <laughs> it's never gonna work. <laughs> One thing I do like at the end of this film is when Midoriya and it's he is on the boat and saying goodbye to like the kids. He says to the little boy, um, Katsuma, I think his name is. Katsuma, yeah. He says mm-hmm. the exact same words All Might said to him. You can become a hero. Yeah. I mean, oh, go on. Oh, I guess that's another thing that you could relate to a pro and a, uh, like a positive and a negative in the aspect of this movie. Essentially, just being a slightly different retelling of the first episode. <laughs> I know. Yeah, a lot more than that. I know. A lot <laughs> but I'm more just than that. It has a, a pro more. and a con. You could see that as a positive if you like the story aspect of it, but there is some negativity to why that might not work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's de- there's definitely a few things you could say about that. Another positive, uh, I-, I would say for me, um, I love how the movie like just opens up, like you're like just immediately drawn into the action. You mean uh, the League of v- Villains? Yeah, the League of Villains. Duplicas being chased by a few heroes we know, such as Locks and Endeavor. Yes. I did. I did like that Gatling gun random hero we saw, <laughs> but. Hey. I thought that was a cool ability. I wonder what his name is. <laughs> yeah, th- that I thought was really cool. I guess the kids, you could say, are kind of... It, it depends on, on who you're talking to, but I, I really like the roles that the kids play. Kind of standard, but I think it's kind of cool how you have one for like in support for Baki on the other one in support for Deku. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I also liked uh, how you saw at the beginning all the UA students ideas. doing all those good deeds for the people around the town, and it's and you and and uh, and the logic behind it is like that it's, it's some sort of hero training program to get for well for them to take to do some actual hero work while they're finding replacement hero for this island. Also, this might be a bit biased on my part, but. Being Shigaragi for those brief few seconds was amazing. <laughs> Let's see. I suppose so. I did like how he ends up killing Nine at the mm-hmm. end. It's like, okay, I'm the top dog. You're not taking over. Granted, he seemed to, in some ways, he's perhaps a bit more merciful to Nine than he was compared to Overhaul. Really? I don't know. Let's see. Well, let's see. 
Well, he was originally going to kill. I guess that's Overhaul. objective, but yeah. He was originally going to kill Overhaul, but decided to do something much worse: make him quirkless and what have him watch him as he takes over, using his quirk, using his idea. <laughs> like I said before, I think the pacing um, in comparison to the first movie was it, 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 had, it had a much better flow to it. Well, the villain didn't feel out of place that much because they just established it early compared to the first right on. Yeah, two uh, heroes. Yeah, I think because two heroes it took like thirty, maybe forty minutes into building up everything that was going on, and, and it all took place within one day. That's it's, like, that yeah. was the other thing. Yeah, well, yeah. technically, let's see, technically two days because you had the first day of them just to basic, then the next day having villains attacking. But Woo. let's see. But yeah, granted, this is um, the island that they were on. Uh, Nabo Island, yeah. Nabo Island. Is it an actual island of Japan or a made up one? It's a made up one. Ah, okay. Hmm. Uh, and th- this has been prominent in, in my hero, but call it a Star Wars reference, if you will. <laughs> Maybe it is, though, granted, it has no Gungans. <laughs> well, we do know this guy likes to pay homage to certain heroes. Oh, yeah. and- not things because what I mean, you had Godzilla yeah. in the first one too. <laughs> I, mean, my I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that Nabu Island is based off of some real island in Japan, but you know. in in terms of like actually being something related to Nabu, no, it's just the name itself. Um. So should we go on to the negatives now? Hmm? I'll say, um, I, I guess positives for me is uh, the ending. Just the setting it up of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you too can be a hero. I'll be the first to say this. I actually thought Mineta was kind of cool in the movie. He did his moments. I mean, I never hated Mineta's character, though. Funny enough, one thing I'm a bit surprised at is that this movie doesn't have, let's see, any kind of, like, fan service, like, like I don't know. Granted, the other movie didn't really have, unless you count... Seeing the girls in let's see fancy dresses, but I don't know. Yeah, but but the thing is, like, compared to like say, actually, he hasn't really done much recently either. But at least compared to say, midway through this current saga, he's been pretty tame. <laughs> oh yeah, granted, he hasn't really said anything controversial since the, the let's see when he met Ari. <laughs> I think that's what made a lot of people hate him. It's so like, yeah, Mineta, go, go ahead and, and fantasize about an eight-year-old girl. Anyway, should we go on to the negatives now? <laughs> yeah, we... let's, let's go ahead and get to the negatives. Oh boy, do I have a lot to say here. Well, first okay. off, first off, I wanted to let's go with the superficial. I wanted to kick this little girl's teeth in. <laughs> oh yeah, hey little oh, girl. Yeah. Um, here's a pro tip. The heroes are not your toys. Don't create false emergencies just to prove a point to your ideological brother. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what the fuck your reasons are, <laughs> but you don't. It, it, it was you, don't yeah. you don't a tell people your brother is missing, and b don't create a giant fucking grasshopper that has that. By the way, you couldn't even convince Bakugo of all people was real. Yeah. <laughs> well, to remember, Bakugo is. But remember, Bakugo is the third highest in the test scores in his class. <laughs> Let's see, at least academic wise. Yeah, Bakugo is a genius. So he is. It's just his witsy, very obnoxious, and easily angered temper that gets him into trouble. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but now on to the now on to the, my actual negatives with this movie. You know, as basic as it is, um, this is just essentially a retread of what is you know essentially season four. We have a special child who's got special powers. We have a villain who is capable of taking away those special powers. And we have yet another, you know, with, when we have the final confrontation against the villain, Izuku pulls out all the stops. Yep. And it's like, you know, I, I was what as I was what 
even when I this is what I meant when I saw when um when I saw the poster for the first time. You know, really, are we gonna have a movie revolve around these kids? We just had this in the manga, and we're just now having it in the anime. Right. So it's like, uh, it, this makes me wonder which came first, the chicken or the egg? Who had, and, you know, was it a case of the author mentioning to the anime staff he was gonna do this? And as he was doing it, the, the anime staff decided to try and make a movie to capitalize on it? Or, you know, or maybe the anime staff had the idea and the author wanted to get, jump on that first. Who's to say? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the former rather than the latter. But, uh, yeah, the plot to this movie, if you've seen season four, you've seen this movie. As a, and better yet, maybe this movie could have been an alternate universe to season four. Just with less, uh, just with uh, a lot less, um, uh, padding. Yeah. Also, you know, this kid's special quirk, cellular regeneration. Uh, immortality. <laughs> We're really pulling out all the stops here, aren't, aren't we? And it's not, you know, it's basically, you know, if you've got immortality, then pretty much, well, why not throw in time travel while you're at it? You know? Oh, it'll happen at some point. <laughs> Actually, I feel like Eerie is... Everyone knows who Aerie is at this point. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if she has time traveling abilities. Well, we have to wait and see when she gets back, when she becomes a major focus of the plot again. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's going to become a major focus at some point soon. <laughs> also, um, when we were discussing the canonicity of this movie, uh, you know, it's kind of convenient that at the end of the movie, Bakugo essentially gets mind wiped. So oh, yeah. that he has no yeah, recollection. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's the other thing. I was like, mm, okay. Like, it's I, okay. just a bit weird because, you know, it's like he knows what o one for all is, so why does he need his mind wiped? <laughs> you know, it's kind of convenient that we can place this movie in between season three and four. <laughs> because right. Bakugo gets <laughs> mind wiped. So, granted, the funny thing is, this. This movie's supposed to take place with the Mitter Liberation Army, so it's supposed to be technically in between season five. <laughs> also, yeah. as, also, as fun as it was to see the League of Villains, um, pointless cameos. That is all. They literally contributed nothing to this plot other than providing a base of operations. That's it. No, you could have literally, it. you could have literally have this movie's villains just stumble upon to an empty warehouse, and it would have resulted in the exact same things. Yeah, pretty much. Do you? Let, let me ask you this: a Sasuke from Bonds, or? Uh, I'll at least say that Sasuke from Bonds had a bit more involvement in the plot. That's fair. <laughs> But only by a slight margin. But because otherwise you could cut him out of bonds too. Mm -hmm. And literally yeah. nothing would change. <laughs> I would have wish for the League of Villains to actually team up with these guys. Because at least it would have given them more purpose. But then probably the movie would have just been bloated with this huge cast of characters. And with only this, um, you know, an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes runtime, you know, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a really whole lot you can do. So, yeah, you know, a lot longer well, than uh, the last one. That's for yeah, sure. The last one was an hour and 20, at least. Yeah. So, you know, it's a double edged sword. On the one hand, longer movie. On the other hand, well, you know, more characters. Mm -hmm. Take it back. Um, also. This movie is heavily reliant on stock footage. <laughs> like, the first movie had some of it, but this movie, it's really banking on, <laughs> on making these connections between, <laughs> between Izuku and All Might. Oh, because, yeah. my God, this, these first, the first 45 minutes of the movie there's about 10 minutes worth of stock footage. 
one way oh, and or the other. Also, in the beginning of the movie, where we're in, you know, my name is Izuku Midoriya, and this is my life story. Um, <laughs> we can't you should have done this in the first movie, because by this point, this is like Pokemon and all their movies. In this in this world, we have heroes where 80%, and 80% of the population has at least one quirk. Fair I'm like, enough. no shit. That's why I'm watching this movie. Go to a it, run time with something else. It's, it feels don't like that's just trying to make stuff a... that I already know. You don't like see the... Naruto doing that. You don't yeah. see Dragon Ball did it once with movie five, the first cooler movie. And that was only because they were petting themselves on the back with a Bardock special. <laughs> but otherwise, this, you know, yeah, it's like. My God. How much money did you save by raising by raising that stock footage? You could have. <laughs> how much yeah. money did you actually save, movie? How much money did you actually save by doing that? Uh, the of the population has. Thank you, Midoriya. We know this. <laughs> Another negative I've got about the movie is um, just like the villains' motivations. Like, I'm sorry, but this villain has some of the weakest motivations ever in regards to wanting the, the, the secret to, immor to immortality. I don't want to die. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could have just had him be plain old nasty evil, like Frieza. You know, just no motivation. He's just plain old nasty evil. But mm -hmm. no, he, his reason is, I don't want to die. Ugh. Lame. Well, well, other than that being that, yeah, I want to make a new utopia where the strong live at the top and the weak are at the bottom. The weak yeah. deserve death, yeah. You mean like a villain? <laughs> <laughs> Dictatorship? But that, that's, that's where I was thinking. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Any more negatives you guys can think? Because I'm well. Alive. This might be a not my minor nitpick, but I kind of found it a bit. No, it's also kind of funny, but I kind of found it weird how Endeavor hugged Shoto at the end. I thought that was funny. I was like, huh. I mean, yeah, it was funny. It's like I know that Endeavor's trying to be a better father in the later half of the series, but it's like, would you be this kind of huggy? Well, well, kind of just like that anyway, but yeah. It's, I, I suppose, know. another nitpick I'd probably have, well, another complaint I do have is that I think that the two kids, um, Katsuma and Maho, are a lot less engaging compared to the, I've forgotten the girl's name and her father from the last film. As, uh, let's see, as I Melissa feel like, and, uh, and Melissa Dave, and Dave. Dave. Yeah, Dave. yeah. Melissa yeah Dave. as I feel like those two had much more integrated part of the plot when it came to like that let's see um well, the villain, see. yes <laughs> yeah. so i'll also, say this much when, when i watched the movie dubbed i was surprised to hear johnny young bosh come out of the villain's mouth i was like yeah I, 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 I thought i heard that voice somewhere before but i just can picture out where but yeah. you couldn't picture it no Jesus. although he he I guess you could call it a nitpick, but every time I heard him, I was like, Ichigo. <laughs> okay. Well, that's always Johnny Bosch. He doesn't really have a distinct... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I know, but I, yeah. I, I just, my, my immediate, that, that's where I most recognize him from, is from Bleach. I was like, or oh. that is a distinctive voice, and he just can't really mask it. Too. Granted, it too he, always does, he always does good chemistry whenever he's, when he's ever, whenever his characters are interacting with the voice actress for soccer, Kate Higgins. Whenever they get interact with each other in an anime such as Code Geass or Early Shippuden, but anyway, um, a fun fact about uh, about Bleach Blue, uh, is he also voiced uh, Unahara, I think, and no, Karin. Karin, yeah, yeah, I know. I think she also voiced Unahano, you know, the fourth division captain. I looked at the Wikipedia page, but anyway, getting back to the kids, I also kind of found them a bit idiotic in some things, like when they were just just. I granted they're kids, and I suppose they should, they wouldn't, for most kids, would be paralyzed in fear, but when everyone's telling them to run, they just stand there and let the villain come to them, and it's like, I get it, this is for dramatic tension, but just like at the same time, I feel like, run! Run, you little mink! Minxes! 
Don't get caught. I don't know. That might just be me. Maybe I'm being I, a bit. I, I don't know. Like nothing to me, nothing can ever be as bad as amazing too. Oh, hey, look, Electro and Spider Man are about to fight, and you got the entire like citizens of New York like fight. So I'm like, is this a UFC match? Like, why, why aren't we running? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It might I, just I, I will, be. I will, I will never <laughs> let that go. But I guess for me, when it comes to negatives, is yeah, I, I do wish we got to see uh, the league of the league of villains get like some role in this. And the movie that that's one. The biggest one for me, though, I would have to say is that the center focus villains themselves. They seem pretty standard. Really, didn't have a whole lot going for them. Per se, well, most let's see, well for most movie henchmen, they don't get much development. Uh, granted, I do feel like Chimera had a bit of a personality with the way he had to hold his cigar and the way he just fought people. I felt like he was the one that was given the most personality of the lot. <laughs> In a way, yeah. I mean, okay. As far as drawbacks go for nine, I do think it was kind of neat that he wasn't. Okay, he has nine quirks, which is already kind of overpowered in and of itself, but I do like that there, there, there was a bit of limitation to what he could do. Let's see. Uh, this might be um, a... Let's see. You might call this a nitpick or not, but I kind of found All Might's explanation of why Midoriya ended up kept keeping one for all to be a bit corny is like, ooh, the hearts of all the heroes before him decided that Midoriya was still worthy to keep it, given how he was willing to sacrifice it. In some ways, I would have just probably just preferred the explanation of Bakugo losing conscious before the quirk was completely passed on. <laughs> that would be the thing. No. It's almost like, uh, like uh, Pegasus versus Yuki. Oh no, why can't I read his mind? Because he has the heart of his friends guiding him. <laughs> or every power of friendship moment you can think of in anime. <laughs> anyway, you've got any Nick picks you want to talk about, Margarita? Uh, I believe I do, actually. Um, kind of half positive, half negative. Um, I guess going back to my Bakugo thing, obviously the negative aspect of that is if anyone is accustomed to Dragon Ball movies or just Dragon Ball in general, people generally actually have a fondness for Vegeta more so than Goku these days. So many it's people. A, that's <laughs> because of just how idiotic Goku has become. These it days. could be like that, possibly. I feel like it's been more so because of Super. That like, could I, also I, be I it. I feel like been a factor. Granted, I think Bro is probably the best way they've handled Goku, but that's just Yeah. But on that aspect, it's like, uh, you know, every time the main character shows up, the secondary character, be it the rival or the arch rival or whatever you want to call them, they just have to, like, literally take their lumps <laughs> in the situation. So even though, even though, I guess in this case, Deku still isn't at his maximum potential, the fact that he, I guess, is doing better than Bakugo could be considered a Instead of fighting on par with each other, Dek, uh, Baku just kind of, you know, takes the, the beating compared to Deku, t like, consistently doing more. I don't, I don't know necessarily how to describe it, but either way, uh, the Vegeta syndrome has always been that uh, no matter how much popular the, char the secondary character gets, he still has to, like, I guess, as you would call it, uh, oh man, there was a word for it too, and I can't remember it. It's not choke. It's uh, <laughs> I can't remember the word. <laughs> um, describe describe what it is, and maybe me and Lucky G could figure out the word. It's kind of like flop, but shoot, um, I have it saved somewhere too because I have a, like just a list of known known people that do it. Um. Either way, I mean, if you look at it this way, Bakugo could have probably did more than what... Sorry, Bakugo kind of stole the spotlight. 
No, he, he not like that. I'm I mean like essentially overshadowed Midoriya. No, Midoriya overshadowed Bakugo in that sense. Bakugo really didn't. I mean, outside of his one win against the villain, that was definitely a repeat of that meat so guy. In other words, he the, got. He's kind of got like a Vegeta beat down and then the hero. Yeah. The but I'm trying to remember the word for that and I can't freaking remember it, so I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm, well, maybe you can find it on TV Trope. <laughs> it probably would be the case. Maybe I don't have it saved anymore. Either way, yeah, a lot of the. A couple of those fights felt like rehashes from earlier, earlier season fights. Or in this case, kind of like how. Steve described it. It was kind of season four done in movie form with different villains. Okay. I guess that's a way of describing it. I don't know. Either way, I guess what I'm also... I guess a negative would it still have to be how the heck does one or the all for one consistently... No, is it all for one? Yeah, all for one. Consistently find a way to be in these movies. Can we not have like can one time? Oh, like, like have a run like yeah. Eagle? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. I I think okay. In terms of like this one uh, made more sense than the first one, but still. Like I, I was gonna say, in terms of two heroes, I can kind of see where where that comes into play because of uh, that connection to All Might, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know if it really worked all that well for this one yeah i guess this is what happened rocky was in the movie yes (laughs) i guess this is what happens when your law is built around these two quirks one for all and all for one (laughs) jobbing that's what it was bakugo jobbed in this in this set okay okay you found the word I didn't even find it. I just remembered it all of a sudden. Yeah, he just jobbed to uh, make Deku look a little better. I mean, I'm not saying that Deku looked all that much better, but even still, Vegeta's a known jobber in Dragon Ball, which people kind of hate. Because it's like, wait a minute. When is he going to at least, you know, get a victory for once? (laughs) But I guess guess the positive of that is that Bakugo in the series typically gets treated pretty well. But it just seems kind of funny in these movies that Deku, like, always consistently overshadows. In this oh, case, God. this one made a little less sense because they're supposed to be regarded as equal in this sense. So that that's all I was trying to get at in terms of the yeah. negativity on the aspect of that. Again, on the positive aspect of that is, again, Bakugo as a character generally gets treated really well even when he isn't doing something particularly interesting however um i think one of my the biggest thing that i was going to talk about was the whole one for all uh cop out i guess oh like you have have, like an emotional uh emotional setup yeah but you have the movie literally start off the same way as every episode, as everything related to My Hero goes, with Midoriya saying, this is the story of how I became the greatest hero. So, there is like no it's... way in hell this movie was going to be like the finale to his story. It's like, it's like they're trying to treat it as like an hour and a half long episode. <laughs> yes, I... That was my reaction when I first came out of it. I'm not saying... I think I've grown to appreciate it having watched it a second time. Oh, yeah. But it's just kind of funny. For a movie that does so many things kind of well, it also has a lot of faults behind it. I feel like this narration would have worked if he's like saying, this is a story that, let's see, has not been told in the, in the usual format or something like that. <laughs> Well, I'd have preferred if it wasn't there at all. Like I right. said, yeah. but like I said, there's like in the first forty-five minutes. There's like ten minutes worth of reused footage from the anime, like, or or even just reusing the same footage later on from from the movie itself with Cam yeah. and uh, Ida doing yeah. those silly things. Yeah, and um, then I, for as much as their involvement was. Not everyone still did anything equally. I guess yeah. that's a good way of putting it. 
In a way, yeah. So, I, I guess you can argue the fact that they were even there is a pretty good sign that maybe maybe they at least tried to give a care of for Class 1A, but uh, you can definitely tell that just like the manga, that there's really only like six maybe prominent characters, seven. Yeah, like out of the cast, let's see, it was Ochiko, Saro, um... Like, even Saro didn't really get to do too much, but yeah, no. Saro and, um... Saro and Mineta are kind of like those secondary main characters, and that mm -hmm. they're a little bit more popular. Yeah. yeah or in Mineta's case, it's the creator's one of his more favorite characters, even if he's generally hated by the fan base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, w yeah, that tends to happen. You sometimes have characters the creators like, but the fandom hates. <laughs> yep. He's definitely one of the most hated within the fandom, but uh, he tends to get treated pretty well by the author, so... Uh, that wasn't really unexpected for me. Granted, I do wonder if the creator's even aware of some of the fandom's hate for the character. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Around somehow. <laughs> but yeah, you have Deku, who's obviously the main character, so he's going to be prominent regardless. Bakugo being the rival and still probably maybe one of the more developed characters in this series. series Bakugo. The love interest Shoto, the ace, uh, Ida, yeah. the the uptight friend, I guess. Ida's there. Sue's pretty popular, so she kind of tends to get some pretty decent roles. Yeah, so does, Toki, so, so, so does uh, Tokayama. Tokyo, yeah. And yeah. there's also Red Riot, who's Bakugo's best yeah. friend. Sure, right, she yeah. tends to get some things, but I think given season four, he wasn't given a whole lot in this movie. Like, he yeah. had, like, one real prominent role, and that was kind of, kind of it. But, uh, yeah, Kirishima's a pretty, pretty big fan favorite, too. But then you still have, like, the rest of the cast that, like, almost gets to do nothing. Yeah, like, Hagakura is still, like, not really given, a, a, like, a huge spotlight. <laughs> Enough to where I never remember her name either. <laughs> to match her quirk. <laughs> She's invisible back there. <laughs> Granted, she seems to be the only one that didn't really do any fight scenes. But then again, I guess that's due to the fact her quirk is just invisibility. And she doesn't have like like like, you know, the invisible woman in Marvel, like those force fields or right. stuff like that that allow her to do some fighting. Which I mean, who knows? That could happen if that's like a quirk Season evolution thing. Gives yeah. her something at least now. I suppose if you wanted to compare apples to oranges, this movie is also, in terms of how they use their characters, it's akin to Dragon Ball Z movie three, Tree of Might. Yeah. You know where they were. It's a much smaller cast. Only you know, Pic um, Piccolo, Krillin, Tien, Yamcha, and Chiaotzu, alongside right. Goku and Gohan. Yep. Um, you know, you could you could argue that the that that movie is reminiscent of this movie in terms of how they use their characters, where it's uh, sure they're facing up against the the lackeys, but it's not all, but it's not really, you know, it's not really so much of a, you know, a proper fight as it is build up towards the main fight between, in this case, you know, Izuku right. and uh, Nine. But, but, you know, you could also, you know, the reason I say compare apples to oranges is because obviously Tree of Might's runtime is only like an hour long compared to an hour and 45 minutes here. So, you know, you got you got a little bit more breathing room for yeah. at least for at least the beginning of the movie to properly to showcase these characters. But uh right. yeah, once the uh, once the fighting starts, yeah, that's uh it just goes to show what the what the anime staff has trouble with in regards to writing, uh, writing for the secondary characters. It's true. I mean, yeah. Kaminari is actually kind of popular, and he only had a, one really important scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they all have their own, maybe not every single one, like Hail Guy, who Soji is his name, I think. Mm -hmm. His most notable feature was holding off Chimera for, I think, 
Tokayami <laughs> to get reinforcements. Right. But I'm just going to say he's kind of a forgettable character anyway in the series. He's just kind of bland, being his quirk only a tail. <laughs> then you have uh, Sinji, is his name? I think so, yeah. The arm guy, who kind of de- tends to not really do too much in terms of fighting either. Uh, Juro's kind of another fan favorite. She got a couple things in this. I mean, other than that, again, for quirk-related-wise, I guess they all did their parts. Mm-hmm decently well, like Steve was saying. But uh, back to my whole one-for-all thing being the, the transfer-not-transfer transfer situation. Like, jeez, man, how many... That It just felt like a really big, big plot convenient point, I guess, at that point. <laughs> Which will... I mean, when, pe- when anime watchers get to see... Uh, Season 5, it'll really hit home as to what this may or may not have entitled. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those ones where I might agree with if if we had 4Life here, that probably would have been a major nitpick of his own. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone remembers. Uh, yeah. If any of our My Hero fans remember our last, last manga discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not not his favorite uh, reveal to ever occur. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of warmed up to what, what what's happened without saying what it is, but even then, I've, I've still got my issues with it. <laughs> um, well, I mean, in terms of the ending, uh, since you brought it up, uh, uh, I do know that Koei said that it was intended. That was like one of the intended endings that he had in mind for my hero. Which kind of gets me wondering about a few things. You know, I do wonder... I have been wondering lately if the narration Midoriya is having right now throughout the manga series is him telling his successor his story as he's giving... I just don't feel like Greatest Hero would make sense. But I I know what you guys are catching on to. I just don't feel like Greatest Hero could be like a symbolic thing more so than... Like a sacrifice? Yeah, nah. Yeah, I just don't see it. I mean, I guess if it happens, it happens, but I I just don't see him being like someone who does a more symbolic pass-off than, than someone who li- literally just becomes the greatest hero. It, yeah, yeah like, it, it, becomes, it, would be like, it would be like something akin to, like, Superman or... Yeah. Spider-Man, yeah. Like, I don't think he'll... I don't want necessarily want him to become, like, this invincible figure, per se, but... I don't, again, I just don't, I don't feel like that's the right thing would, would end on a somewhat bittersweet moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, okay, if he wins, wins and becomes like the greatest hero, but then he somehow loses his quirk, that just feels kind of bittersweet. Because <laughs> I don't feel like his whole, I, his whole thing isn't to necessarily beat villains down, it's to save people. The only way that him like literally losing the quirk would be if no villains would ever come back at any point in the situation. That's my only thought process on that one. But uh, I guess I would say, I, since we were also talking nitpicks, I think my biggest nitpick of the My Hero of this movie, and then I guess maybe as the series as a whole, is... All these, like, moves that feel like kill moves. <laughs> like, Bakugo's ex- maximum explosion from his grenade launcher didn't kill the guy somehow. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, why? How did that not happen? <laughs> First off, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing that he didn't kill him. It just seems kind of weird that a, guy, that a guy that only whose only power is being able to transform inanimate objects into puppets, uh, has the durability to survive an explosion to the face that um, breaks I suppose, the wall. I think, let's see, I think it might just apply to the standard shonen rules where the protagonists aren't allowed to kill it's while the true. villains are. <laughs> but I think the biggest, the biggest, and I, I even said this during the movie, the biggest... 
what the hell is the fact that Shoto's move was not a kill move. Uh huh. There's absolute zero. You freeze a guy from the inside out and you don't kill him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you there. That's. That one was. That, was, that one's really questionable. Yeah. I guess maybe since his Chimera quirk is so powerful, it, it, it gives him. Well. It gives him a resistance from being killed or something. That's the only logic I can think of. <laughs> well, I guess if there's, if there's such a thing as Arctic Wolves in the real world, why not have a super wolf in the My Hero Academia world that can survive ex- literally sub-zero temperatures? Right. That is true, yeah. But I feel like their insides wouldn't be... I mean, I don't know. I don't know how if Cloud Cold works in that situation, but I feel like the exterior prevents the interior from being like you know frozen <laughs> but that's just a nitpick i'm not saying i mean all both those things were really cool moments just suspension of disbelief can only go so far even in fiction at times <laughs> right um other than that i mean i think the maybe the villain part was kind of Pushing it too was a nitpick because it seems like every time he got worn down, somehow he kept getting back up. How many cells does this guy have? <laughs> like, too many kept getting, he got, kept getting destroyed. Like, <laughs> why do you even need this quirk if he can just, you know, plow through all of this? I know because it's not. Uh, I, I suppose the logic is: let's see, he needs to be still beaten by the heroes in the end. <laughs> and I, the worst part is, is, I can't even. I can't even spoil what this. This movie now feels like knowing the current arc. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I'm not going to spoil it, even though I guess that's technically in its amount of spoiler. Go read the manga, kids. <laughs> Let's see. Officially, not not yeah. online. Officially, yeah, officially read it. Yeah. <laughs> go to Amazon. Go to Comicsology. If, if you can read, yeah. if you can read Japanese better, you know, yeah. then you can you can import. You can import it directly, right. or even just buy one of those online manga apps. Or, do or big... go to Viz Media. I know it only reads the first three or the latest three chapters translated, but still, at least you'll be caught up to date to an extent. But hey, yep. That or if you do end up reading the online for free sites, at least buy some of the merchandise later, so you're still technically supporting the series. Like me with my statues, <laughs> or with me who just owns uh, the first Everything. eleven volumes. Yeah, and, all the volumes. Uh, first eleven volumes, season one, season two, set two heroes, and this one now. I do own two heroes. Or like me, who happens to wait for when the anime does complete season sets <laughs> rather than yeah. parts. That's what Even I though do. that takes forever. <laughs> parts are for. Parts are a waste of money and cents. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Blue. I'm, I'm just saying. Like, if, if, if I'm paying fifty bucks, it better be for a whole season. I'm not spending fifty for half. That's a ripoff. The, the, the only reason you'd pay for parts is because you haven't upgraded your play, your media, you know, your media setup to play Blu-rays, and you're still on DVDs. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the only way you can get the DVDs. Is, it, right. is the parts. I mean, Funimation used to do that with a couple of them. I mean, like, I think, the, what was the, it? Uh, the, like a oh, yeah, another number. way to support the series is if you have, like, if it's on Netflix, watch it. Mm. Subscribe to Crunchyroll, I guess. So I go mm. on. Don't say your thing, Steve. But the the last uh, last set of DVDs that Funimation released for My Hero Academia was for season season two, I think. Three supposedly came out already, but I haven't seen anything about that mm. yet. Because I know there was a there was separate part one and part two season two DVD sets on Amazon that I'd yeah. seen. Uh, but yeah, I mean those were my nitpicks. I don't really think um, I think everyone else already kind of covered the more negative aspects. Yeah. So if I'm still talking, I guess I'll do the overall thoughts then, maybe <laughs> if we're going to transition into that. Just uh, I mean, now. we've pretty much given our overall yeah. thoughts at this point, you know. Probably true. I uh, mean, I'll I'll say, go ahead. Oh, I was I was gonna say, I think I said it already. It's like for a movie that I actually now kind of appreciate for the good things, they're 
quite a decent amount of flaws too. So I don't I'd know. If this is, I bad. feel like this movie is a good canon side story that doesn't <laughs> affect too much of the plot or doesn't change the plot like <coughs> the last. <laughs> but hey. I'm gonna throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um I'll say I'll say this much. Overall, movie's pretty good, but don't expect too much from the plot. You're yeah. you're you're sitting. You either have to be uh, already a fan of My Hero Academia, or um, you, or or you're just a fan of Sean and anime in general, in order to watch this movie. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, uh, you know, it's not. I, w- I wouldn't. It's fine for some, but probably not fine for others. I'd say it's probably just a movie you can watch to pass the time. As for me, I don't know what I would really say for my overall thoughts, except that it's it's a it's a great movie. You wouldn't really find what's the word here. I want I want to find kind of like what Blue Star says. It's a, it's a good time pass. <laughs> it's, got some, it's got some things you'll like about it, and kind of give you that thought about the ending of like, hmm. Okay, like, would this be a good spot to stop at, or could you continue? And I, I guess that's up to your interpretation. In many, but yeah. In many ways, I feel like this mo- the, the movie, this movie, as well as the last movie, does stuff that you won't really see in the manga, such as you know the first movie. You had Midoriya and All Might teaming up, which never really happened in the manga. Spray. Yeah. Well, well, okay, you- as as cool as the Bakugo and Deku team up was, I think the the Deku and All Might one was. Better, um, Better but, yeah. yeah. But I think, like, let's see. I think in many ways this movie was just a bit of an experiment of what if you had a villain that had all for one, but in a much more lesser capacity, or what is if Midoriya could share his quirk temporarily, and you have two all for one users taking on the what's it, 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 well, I mean, the one for all users fighting an all for one villain. Because some part of me wondered if this was, would be how he would have done the final Shigaraki fight, but clearly that's not going to be the case. But, yeah. But and all- be Bakugo and Midoriya teaming up against him, but but at least <laughs> this way, it's not going to be the way they did in this movie, at least. It's a fun, what kind of what-if scenario, in a sense. Go on, Akichi. Hmm. And also, um, because th- this news had come out after the movie was out in theaters, a so-called complete edition were we just misinformed about that? I don't know. I do know that the last movie had a manga edition, a manga volume edition, which I don't think is. Is it out in I the think, US? I think the. Well, I I think so, but I think the manga adaptation for this movie is set to come out in January next year. It is. Hmm. So a year from when it initially. Or year ish enough from year ish, yeah. So, out of curiosity, has the manga version for the two heroes come out in the America yet? Or, I don't know. I uh, mean, because I haven't seen it online for Amazon because I probably would buy it just to see how the manga would draw it. Or well, if it's it. not on Amazon, then it's not, it hasn't been released in English yet. Mm hmm. Although, me personally, I don't get what the point of having a manga adaptation of a movie it's really it. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's literally, it's literally <laughs> word for word, scene for scene. Yeah, it is. It's like, you know, oh, for, you don't want to watch it. You just want to read it. Oh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what the pictures look like in still frame. By I the mean, way, you know, this, the, this thing that's meant to be seen in motion, yeah, here's a freeze frame. <laughs> freeze frame version of it. I mean, I guess the art could be different depending on how you do it, but I know the Naruto movies that did uh, the manga version were just literally, literally the movie. I suppose the only different, well, I suppose with Boruto and Dragon Ball Super, they kind of changed the plots a little bit, but I don't know. still found Boruto adapting the movie to be pointless at the beginning. Pretty pointless indeed. Mm-hmm. Super at least tried to do it only because it was, you know, so it was. Battle of Gods and Revival of F were uh, licensed under Dragon Ball Z, so Super needed to do its own things. Yeah. And the manga didn't even do a Revival of F, it just kind of did uh, a quick uh, Battle of Gods setup, which changed stuff from the 
I changed actually a couple things from the anime and the movie, so I guess that was all right. Um, yeah. Let's see, yeah, Dad, I believe let's see. a lot of Revival of F though. I think Revival of F had its own manga adaption from another thing, so I think that's why the Super Mangaka did not bother to do it here, and I think that's the same case with Brawly. It did an intro. It didn't actually do the movie itself. Um, but yes, uh, Revival of F did have something done by Toya to uh, get an introduction to the actual movie itself. But it wasn't act- it wasn't the super manga per se. Mm-hmm. So I guess so, we're, I guess uh, compared to the first though, I mean, I think we sort of tackled that in throughout. How it compares? Yeah, to- I mean, compared so re- compared to the first movie, um, uh, the first movie I'll say was a testing ground it for was. how uh, for how how to how to. Um, how do I at least write a an hour and twenty minute episode? And then this and then this movie sort of expanded on that, both figuratively and literally, <laughs> uh, with an extra twenty minutes of runtime. I'll say I, I liked the villain more in the first movie than in this movie, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's comparing apples to oranges again because they both they both had totally different motivations. For doing for doing what they did, um, I'll say that I'll say also that the movie the the first movie has a slight more edge in terms of original characters with uh, with All Might's niece, but uh, and best friend, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. and you know, and like I, I mentioned a earlier, person, yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, is especially with the boy here, th- this is literally copy paste season four. You know, with the, in terms of the the chi- the special child who must be protected. In many ways, all. you could even argue that the girl is a copy of like um that little I think Kota from season three. Okay. I guess sort you could argue that. Yeah, I guess. Okay, sort of m- semi. I guess she does. Dis- she dislikes heroes at least. I mean, granted, she didn't dislike just heroes. Just... She just didn't want her brother to get to become one. Too caught up in it. Yeah. Yeah. One. Wanted him to be safe, and he wanted to do something dangerous. But his quirk is unsuited for hero work. <laughs> All of this sounds so familiar. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think I think I said, or maybe I didn't. But uh, I think movie one might have had a better plot, I guess, because it actually tried to tell an original story. Mm-hmm. What and I think you had a bit more character work with like the two characters that were introduced, and mm-hmm. to some extent, maybe the, some of the characters that were also involved with the plot, such as All Might and Midoriya. But uh, I guess villain-wise, they both had their their faults. I think the first one was just a little more flat because they didn't really introduce them till. Like thirty minutes oh, in, yeah. Way through the movie, yeah. yeah. That, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, for me, I feel all for one's mo- motive in the first one didn't really make too much sense to me. Or maybe it made sense after the fact, but originally, or or maybe it doesn't make sense now after the fact. I don't know anymore. But. Let's see. Um, Aegis' mo- his main motivation to help this bad guy was it mess with All Might's friend, right? Uh, and to see uh, and to what have All Might witness the de- let's see the fall of his friend's right. see, career or something. Yeah, yeah. So then- I suppose in some ways you could say it's like kind of similar to what's going on right now with the manga, but uh, it's, yeah. it's not just spoilers. No, I guess that's true. Uh, but then in the second one, I guess it also doesn't make too much sense because again, if you ha- if you're going to have Shigaraki and the League of Villains even show up at all, I guess it really wouldn't have made sense unless unless you think of it now as if you're up to date with the manga. That I mean, that's all I was gonna. That's all I'm gonna say on that. It, it could 
in theory makes sense if you know everything in the manga right now. Feel, yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel, I feel like, like anything. in many ways, if you look at the manga, you see, ah, uh, this is like a prototype for what's going to happen in the future. Which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, <laughs> But, I mean, having read the manga, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I suppose that's what happens when you have multi when you do a multimedia project when you need to look at oh wait you need to look at this in order to explain this yeah <laughs> well, I, I was gonna say for the most I, I was gonna say for the most part um, despite it being after um, the Metal Liberation Army arc yeah I think it, I think uh, Heroes Rising did do a pretty good job of keeping itself contained without referencing a whole lot of things from. Is it that after, arc. though? Because, I mean, they're still in their, like, crappy home base situation. That's what it... Yeah, I don't know. It's... Is it's like, before but during at the same time? Well, according to the wiki, um, they said it's supposed to be after the Middle Liberation Army arc. Really? It's it's during the... Uh, I, and I kept, I kept checking up on the manga to see where this happens, but it's during the two-week time skip. Oh. So I don't know if that. So I'm mm. wondering if it's after Endeavor. I suppose I couldn't really do it before, since Shigaraki is a bit occupied <laughs> from this timeline. As from this time, which season five will probably explain once it gets to that particular arc. But hey, right. But go on, Lucky Chief. Um, I'll say this: Melissa and Dave, uh, they had um probably a better story arc like character arc themselves and in, in, in two heroes um, it, it's kind of the opposite here where uh, Katsuma and Mahuro uh, don't really have a lot to say in terms of their characters whereas when it, it's not a lot per se with Nine but Nine does have a little bit more of a motivation as to what he's doing versus say Wolfram, who was just eh, kind of mayhem. In many ways, I'd say those two kids are kind of like standard Phil and Nato movie character, <laughs> who don't have much personality, though, even though they're like the focus of the plot <laughs> of the yeah. film for the most part. <laughs> like all shown in movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, I'd say they're I'd, I'd say they're both kind of even in that sense. Um, I'll, I definitely say that in terms of pacing, and I've said this before, it's it's much more better paced. Two heroes were because two heroes like literally took place in like one day versus this, which took at least a little bit more time. Yeah, you had a night and then a day, and then you had a week well, and a week of first. But... I was gonna say is that like um, also they didn't really struggle a whole lot in two heroes. Whereas here, sure. you, you actually get to see the class actually struggle against the villains. What, the first one, they weren't even can la labeled as heroes in the first one? They were just heroes in training, I guess? So I guess they had to make the villains beatable? <laughs> I thought it felt like I was like, oh, okay. Well, this, this one, one like I said... Well, like I said in the pros, you actually, even when you had some of the heroes winning, they still were passed out after their victories, <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. The exception of Bakugo beating Mami, but of course, he needed to get his beat down by nine. <laughs> this is where James's uh, take on Dragon Ball and how the fact that Goku kind of has to consistently be the loser when the arc starts. This movie might have went a little too far in terms of how strong they made their villains. I don't know. I, I guess in some ways they feel in some ways they felt stronger than the League of Villains but in some cases, but I, again, the League of Villains are still about so, and they seem to be getting stronger but... That's I, another nitpick I think I had for not this, not this movie, but just My Hero in general. Like in was, general, yeah. It just seems like no matter what or how good or how strong the vi heroes get, the villains just kind of get like this free pass. <laughs> I suppose that since they're bad guys, it kind of like it makes sense that they get their wife for cheating. But 
Wow. <laughs> they don't even seem to like the villains don't even like really do anything to be that strong is the problem in some cases. Oh well. Hmm. But whatever. It could, go, it could be possibly that uh, Koei when he did the initial quirks, he like oh yeah, these are some of these might not work in the long term unless I add stuff to them. <laughs> like Gabi, like as far as we know, never really trains or anything. He just goes around. Well, to be fair, we've never really seen Darby in, t- in a full-on fight until really now, really. <laughs> I-, I guess, but I mean, he- even his clone like gave Azawa uh, like a I lot of clones, trouble. I think the clones. I think that was explained as the clones being too weak, but that was anyway. true. But he still struggled. That was the hard part. Like Azawa didn't exactly like take walk his way through that fight. <laughs> Anyway, should we get on to the how? Let's see, we're coming in film uh, how this film is compared to two heroes, right? That's yeah. what we've been doing. That's yeah. what we've been doing. So I'll I'll say this like overall, at least for me, um, I'd say hero like again they're 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 like almost neck and neck. Maybe Heroes Rising is like just slightly above. Slightly. I'd say Two Heroes has the better character work, while Heroes Rising has the better action, let's see, packed thing. Uh-huh. Your flavor of the day, do you want a slightly better plot, or do you want to just watch nothing but action? I guess that, that's how you I'm could not, describe I'm it. Going like it's like, as in, like, Michael get their explosions thing. I mean, no. I'd say... Uh, although but technically, I'm just that if you were to pick one <laughs> on any given day, it, it depends on that situation. Are you feeling yeah more for a story that day, or are you feeling more for something action packed that day? Right. That's, yeah. where, that's where it's like okay, they're kind of equal. They're not equal at the same time, but I mean, for my hero movies, they're entertaining and stuff. Oddly yeah. enough. Oddly enough, on an unrelated tangent, me and Manga Reader, <laughs> when we went to go see the movie before, we had some ice cream at <laughs> Cold Stone yeah. Creamery. <laughs> that we did. Oh, yeah. We were cold hearted that day. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so now let's get to question number two. Uh, do you believe this is intended to be the final movie in the franchise? Because I know that's what uh, Koei said. Uh, just before the movie was coming out, or after that, it's like, yep, after Heroes Rising, that's it. No more movies. I mean, he can say that as much as he wants, but I think Toho would have a different opinion. I think as, long as, as long as they view these movies as profitable, or that the franchise itself is profitable enough to have a movie, they probably do it. Well, as according to. Well, Sorry. according to the back of the Blu-ray box, Funimation claims this was the number one hero movie. <laughs> that is true. I saw that too. Yeah, the number one of hero course, movie. That's, a, that's also an overly narrow superlative you can give, because I'm pretty sure that same year, or at least the year before, people had a different opinion. <laughs> uh, well, let's see, let's see. well, let's see. This movie came out technically the same it's a, well, at least in Japan, the same okay, year. In, technically in Japan, December 2019 versus Endgame, May 2019. But still, my, my point still stands. <laughs> That's what Funimation claims. Yeah. yeah. The number one hero movie. Even though I guess it was outdone by Sonic the Hedgehog. That's <laughs> it. Well, to be fair, most anime movies never. We know they're niches, but we know. Yeah. Let's see, they never. It's the closest you ever see to, I think. Because we think, don't market them here all too well at all. The closest you probably ever see we to being D. I think the highest you have ever seen, I think, would be either Dragon Ball or I think the early days of Pokemon. <laughs> As far as I right. remember, I think Pokemon was the only one that ever really got any heavy marketing here in the in the states. Yeah, Every, everything yeah, was Pokemon. now interrelated. Yeah, it's Pokemon, especially like Pokemon said. movie three, but yeah. yeah, it's because it was the '90s and it was a different time. That's mm-hmm. true. Anime was at least in theaters was never really mainstream. Crap, even you had you got a couple movies or the two or at least the first movie I know. Due to the fact that some of the early anime movies, 
It's due to like some of the because I think you know you also had the Digimon movie come out in cinemas. Critics yeah. did not really like those movies, so well, when you had happened. Angela Anaconda open your movie instead of the actual Digimon, I think those critics were right in complaining. We had a problem too in that we made three movies and one that had like literally no connection to each other, <laughs> right. I mean, they tried to make a connection, but... Well, it's... they did it in America, yeah. They tried to make it a connection, but in Japan, those were three separate... Movies. Like, I don't even know if the Agamon versus Parrot... Or, well, Greymon versus that Parrotmon was... was even a movie at that point. The, Par- the Parrotmon movie? Yeah, that was a movie. It was, a it, four- was. it was like a... You know, that was a truncated, by the way. In the American release, that was truncated. It was originally like a 45-minute film. Oh, well, 45 minute short film and uh-huh. they lop off like I think 15 minutes of it oh, God. in many ways you could say it's more the Digimon movies are more like TV specials really <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think the first well, movie actually was actually a movie mm-hmm. yeah, I think organic. people might I think yeah. people also might have a thing to say about the more recent movies mm-hmm. uh, but that's that's neither here nor there Oh, Digimon's rebooted itself, so hey. Mm. Yes, Captain Obvious. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I didn't I, know that until you mentioned it. I don't know. There might be just some viewers that might not know that. <laughs> Mr. Wikipedia, folks. Aye, aye, aye. Mr. I'm, Wikipedia. How's this Mr. Wikipedia? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> uh, I'll take Mr. Wikipedia over Cursed Child, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, whoa, whoa. so yeah, I think if there's a story to tell, I think they in the third movie. I think they will probably make a third movie. I mean, I mean, Tonato, they did a movie every year because at the time the franchise was at its most profitable and all that stuff. But well, I'm told that due to the fact that Borto's barely it's he's trying to stay on the anime with its kids time slot and the manga not doing that well they don't have enough let's see if budget for a movie yeah yeah i so, mean even if you look at what well, and this is more so recently but like even if you look at one piece like after uh strong world i think yeah after strong world it's been relatively let's see 2012 so uh it's been like almost like every few years we get a one piece movie so yeah. Maybe it could be similar to to my hero. Granted, my the two my hero movies that came back to back yearly. Though, granted, let's see, it's understandable why you wouldn't have one out this year due to <laughs> what's happened globally in the world. But who knows? It's, it might also be possible. Let's see, hero might wait for the manga to go through a few more arcs, the anime to go for a few more seasons before doing a movie and. Possibly something more related to the current events before going back into a movie. Because, for example, the first movie was in the hmm, UA beginning saga. The second movie's in the Rise of the Villains saga, for we know. Depending on what happens next in the manga, it could just be wait for another movie to happen in for a new saga. <laughs> well, if it goes to the Naruto route, they get. I guess. Depending on whether they want to time, I mean, they got to rush uh, the uh, <laughs> third movie if they want to hit it for twenty twenty one. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, oh but shit! I, let's... But at the moment, I'd rather they not let's see. Let's see. I rather they don't have a movie that will just force the manga to change its story, like what happened with Naruto. I think yep. we agree on that. See, so it's usually why I think most people. This, I, this, I can understand why most movie, most of the original anime movies were non-canon because don't affect the plot in any way. But of course, lately you have movies that now starting to become sort of semi-canon or becoming canon. <laughs> so, yeah, or more involvement with the manga creators. But funny enough, Black Clover is still yet to get an anime. I wonder why. I mean, Black Clover Mom to get movie? a movie. Yeah. I wonder why. I mean, it seems like it's a fairly popular series, but I don't know. I could be, I could digress, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why Black Clover hasn't gotten one yet. I'm kind of surprised by that. Yeah, I am too. Now, as what I would like to see in the third movie, um, 
I, as cliche as it sounds, I'd like to see the heroes and the villains teaming up. That would be cool. That would be cool. A bigger villain than the villain? That would be, yeah. Like, the, en- the enemy of my enemy is my enemy. One thing I'd probably find a thing they could possibly do is, granted this would be spoiler for Season 5, is do something with Midoriya's um, current ability states. Oh, of course they would. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's like, it's a given. At the, at, you know, for any anime movie, really. You know, what? The, what's a better way to hype up, you know, the anime and the manga? Why showcasing what's new, you know? <laughs> but yeah, but like, you know why he's currently not got all the ability, all his current abilities down. You just maybe have like him temporarily doing it for like the movie. But you know, kind of like with like how in the first movie you had that little equipment thing that allowed him to go 100% for a while. <laughs> right. But Something like that. Yeah. The reverse? Yes. Yeah. I'd say in terms of a third movie. I say we have Deku go back in time, and the entire purpose of the movie is for him to go back to the front. <laughs> if anyone knows which movie I'm referring to, good job. <laughs> no. <laughs> time travel. Oh, thank you, Lost Tower. But uh, anyway, maybe they'll do parallel universes. <laughs> actually, um, in all seriousness, I don't know what they would do for a third movie, per se. I mean, I do like Steve's idea with having the villains and the heroes teaming up. That would be pretty cool. Maybe an end of the manga situation, like my hero is like wrapping up, and you have like an epilogue film for say. You mean like what's happening right now with Gintama? Hmm? Gintama, um, I'm. If you want to say Dark Side of the Mentions for Yukio, that's another example I would use too. Well, Broly, in a way, it, you could argue is an epilogue per se to Super, so. Even though the manga is still ongoing, <laughs> almost for the anime, but yeah. Well, granted, isn't there rumors of returning the super anime? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Manga reader, uh, what about you? What, what would you want to see for potential third movie? Yeah, what would you want to see? <sighs> I guess I think the one thing that the Naruto movies the first three ones did pretty well was kind of just having like these original characters although i mean i guess the my heroes have their own original characters too but like kind of a slightly more original plot doesn't feel like something that my hero maybe mixing the first two movies essentially yeah like if you're not gonna have characters do something don't necessarily have them appear but at the same time if you know you can make something work with them, make them actually important yeah, to the if story. You're, if you're if you're gonna not have them be there, then just have some sort of like event. Yeah. That makes them, like well, this and probably people will accuse us stealing here, but just like with Thanos snapping away half of the universe, something akin to that. Maybe not turning people to dust, but certainly. <laughs> How about you know, something that steals everyone's quirks? Because quirks is like the main draw of the series. Oh, we yeah, but we, just, <laughs> we just did that with this movie here. So. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, maybe no, a maybe... little, little bit more original than that. Okay, but I don't know. It's just an idea, but like, you know, large scale. But hey. Watch it be that idea. <laughs> it's like, well, we have a villain that can take people's quirks. Damn it, Blue Star! (laughs) (laughs) Lemon Star, add it again, folks. Lemon Star, add it again. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. You gotta stop coming up with all these nicknames, Lucky Chi. The people are gonna eventually can't figure out what to call me. (laughs) Uh. Yeah, but yeah, it's maybe something that could combine the two instead of. Having one have one thing that's good, and one having the other thing that's good. Um, I guess the only other thing would be just having a better villain plot. Yeah, that's that's one thing I would say. Like, yeah, the other thing I can think of, plot. what they might do for a third film is like, is after the manga ended, they might just do a continued story of like something that happened afterwards, or 
maybe even a next gen thing if they want to give that a shot. Okay. Oh, in the movie, <laughs> but in the movie format, but I don't know. As long as they don't do what they did, what Studio Power did with Bor, so they might be fine. <laughs> we don't need Boozuko. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure and the next protagonist would be something with June, since each of the wielders of All for One have some form of the numbers in their name. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Isaku, for example, Ku at the end is nine. Maybe, maybe, maybe do something ballsy. What if you don't have Isaku as your main protagonist for the third movie? Yeah, that is ballsy. I, I don't think it would ever happen either. Let's see, <laughs> Let's see they'd even make Bakugo or Shota because they're the two most popular characters outside of him. The third movie will be based off Vigilantes. <laughs> that would be amazing. Actually, yeah. would or yeah, if they would. could incorporate it, but oh, you know, that makes me think maybe the movie would be a see the My Hero Academia cast interacting with. Yeah. My vigilante cast, they could do oh, that. Oh, me up. Uh, if, if that's what would happen for a third movie, I'd be like, okay. If there was a time travel, that that, that would be the one that would make sense if mm-hmm. it were to have the vigilante group. Well, and... It, it, okay, this isn't much of a spoiler, but if you look at the timeline-wise, there's not that big of a gap between vigilantes and, and the main series. I think it's like about five years of difference. Yeah, so, it's true. I, I just cross over. Yeah, you could. You'd have to age up. Based on that, you'd have to age up the vigilantes, but still, it would be pretty cool. Yeah, I still need to read vigilantes. I read half of the first volume, but let's see. I've been a bit sidetracked. <laughs> no, no biggie. I mean, vigilantes is a spin-off, so it's not like you have to keep up with it or anything. Oh, well, granted, they did. Uh, granted, the recent manga arc has made. Some connections with that series. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's also to say that the recent arc is also the final arc of Vigilantes too. So that's hmm. to take into account. Mm. Oh, that's cool. So that means Vigilantes is coming to a maybe a Shigaraki origin movie. <laughs> You've got season five for that, Lucky Chi. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we got to go through one hurdle, though. Like. <laughs> Just don't and... watch those episodes and skim them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Four Alive's going to have a time of, of his life when that comes out. That's oh, true. boy. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think we've pretty much uh, covered the things. juice when it comes to the crux of the podcast in and of itself. Uh, Steve, Manga Reader, Blue Star, um, we having y'all on board again discussing about my hero. Glad to be here. Same here. I'm glad I recovered from uh, my illness to be here. (laughs) (laughs) I recovered from illness. (laughs) How dare you? (laughs) I expect to see us again probably when the latest arc ends, which could be soon. Or even that, you have another secret Naruto podcast along the way. (laughs) I don't see that happening for at least another year. So, actually, wait, no. We're getting 2021, but that's all a bit away the way. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm Lucky G7. I'm Blue Star Saber. Hmm. I'm LKNMJH, also known as Steve. I'm Manga Reader. And we'll catch you guys next time. Plus Ultra. Plus Ultra. <laughs>